on this episode of Potages. It's fitting, though, that even the credits couldn't be accurate. <laughs> this is a Digimon film written by one of the best screenwriters in anime. Great. It really lived up to that. <laughs> yeah. I that, thought that we should market this episode. Of all the CGI films you've seen, was this one? This was one. Yes. This was one. Yeah. <laughs> this was a movie that, that I saw. I'm glad we all agree. I need a password. You can use mine to get on the internet. I did this. Welcome to Potagist, episode 021, Pixar's Finding Doraemon. Digital Monster X Evolution. Recorded August 19th, 2017. Podigis is your critically nostalgic analytical tour through the uncanny valley of obscure mid-2000s CGI films. I'm Asher Softman, and I'm joined by... Our royal knight, who's always so late he's said to never actually exist, Jeff Ruberg. Kono egaga shinda! Oh my god. Our royal knight who tried to escape this podcast, but was forced to come back with an ex-antibody, Ashley McDonald. Uh, is that what Daruman is? I'm totally here for Daruman. <laughs> Did you watch this movie, and Ashley? Our... <laughs> nah. And... <laughs> and our royal knight who is most dramatic when silently letting people walk past him, Andrew Softman. Flush. Ashley, it was Dukeman. Dukeman dies and comes back as an ex- with an ex antibody. I don't want to be Dukeman. I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Dukeman is the evolution of your favorite character, Ashley. But Daruman's the best character in this movie, and he's Alpha Mon. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm I'm the uh, one who dramatically screams, "This thing is dead." This week, this week we're just doing one giant unanswered question segment, and the name of that unanswered question <laughs> segment is Digital Monster X Evolution. True facts. <laughs> okay, so. Opening statements. What are everyone's reactions and impressions of this movie? It is not as painful as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as I remember it being. (laughs) It just looks horrible. I'm curious. What did you remember of it? I didn't remember any of it. (laughs) Come on, it's me. Um, I did remember Doruman. Uh, I remembered the animation. And I think that's pretty much all I remembered. Didn't remember any of the plot, except like vaguely there's an X antibody. Um, and it separates Digimon into Digimon with it and without it. And, uh, and I remembered that he digivolved at least once, but uh, that was it. <laughs> Asher's review of the movie, Digimon Digivolved. <laughs> Digimon Digivolved, A plus. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Amazing. But so you didn't have like an entirely negative recollection then? Oh, I remember not liking it. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, see, my recollection of it, and I I think, yeah, my recollection of it was actually liking it. Um, I've only seen, before this rewatch, I had only seen it once, and it was, I guess it was not too long after it came out. So around like 2000. 15 or I mean 2005 <laughs> or 6 uh yeah well I guess it was 2007 actually right before I started watching Savers fan subbed um because those are both the, I think like I remember talking to Ashley in like English class about oh did you hear there's the Digimon movie and it's all CGI and there are no humans and what okay and what was my me. response because I'm pretty sure I, no, I think I think you were telling several me about times. It, other way around. Oh, okay that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah it uh Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my my uh, impression of it is that it is like purposefully obtuse and kind of like trying to appeal for an older, f- faux, mature audience. It's purposely obtuse because it has it has one note, and it's like, what? How can I make this a ninety minute movie? <laughs> oh, I, think, I think there's more than one note, but um, uh... but but there's so much so much about the like it's a complex it's actually not that complex of a plot but explained so confusingly that it like i think if you just like do a simple pass through of like watching it without really paying too much attention it won't make any sense and even like yes i, I had to think long and hard to like make sense of things and then i was like okay i think i understand what it's going for and then i read like summaries and recaps and wikis and okay now i think i have like a and then i think i have like a fully solid understanding of it but <laughs> but to go back into like my recollection I think that was kind of what appealed to me about it the first time when I was a high school student was that like it being obtuse and awkwardly written in a way that made things confusing was things was what appealed to me that it was like, oh, yeah, it's so like deep and complex. And like and I think also had a like 
trust in things. Like when I didn't, when I didn't understand things, I assumed it was because the thing was so smart and I needed to think about it harder, which now I've come to be like, ah, sometimes that's true, but most of the time it's just poorly written. Actually, yeah. I, I will defend Jeff's. I think that is exactly basically the same thing I had where it was like, I watched it and I was like, this was weird. It wasn't like other Digimon, but then I kept watching. Like I watched it several times oh. being like, okay, yeah, like, no, this is just like cool, like grittier Digimon. And I like <laughs> appreciate that they're like doing weird things with CGI. And now I'm like, no, no, <laughs> oh, like, get, get out of here. <laughs> it was dated CGI when it came out. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah. if people have not rewatched this movie recently while they're listening to this, the, uh, CGI is, um, bad. I think bad is the word you're looking for. I, I was going to say it's there. It's, it is animated. It's bad, but it's not food fight bad. Um, I have a whole section in our notes to talk about animation. Ooh, fun. My recollection of it, the first time I watched it, however many years ago, 50 years ago, was that the animation, like, it was hard at first to get used to, and then it grew on me. By the end, I was like, oh, it's actually really cool. And no, no. Right. <laughs> See? Like... Yeah. But there were some structural things in, like, the course of the movie. Like, there are certain kinds of Digimon that work well in it and certain that don't. And I think it does kind of make sense that by the end, what you remember, what I remembered were ones that looked cool. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> so, any any other quick impressions or reactions? There's so many unnecessary characters. Like, God. <laughs> it had Sophiemon, so you know what? 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Wizardmon doesn't die. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. really weird. Is it even a Digimon movie at that point? Yeah. X Antibody War Greymon looks cooler than regular War Greymon. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Debatable. Nope. X Antibody <laughs> Metal Guru Mon looks atrocious. <laughs> 0 out of 10. <laughs> I did not recognize him at first. Yeah. <laughs> at first, I was like, oh, it's cool that now he's bipedal instead of quadrupedal. No. Well, that's like but, uh, no, it's not. Ancient Guru Mon. <laughs> Ancient uh, Garurumon's actually a uh, bipedal. Oh, right, because I took a picture of him and captioned it with, he's actually just a furry with a kitchen knife. <laughs> Absolutely <Right>. appalling. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it didn't in practice work too well. And yeah, I, th- I just think like War Greymon X's design fit the animation style and everything really well. And Metal Garurumon X's design, not so much. My only problem with Metal Greymon, I mean War Greymon X, is that he looks like he's wearing overalls. Is that a problem? I no, don't it looks weird. His... <laughs> do, you, do you have a problem with overalls? Uh, no, it... Izzy has overalls. Do you have a problem with Kushro? Are you no? But forsaking... it looks like metal overalls. According to Jeff, ne- oh wait, this is kind of uh, this is kind of a spoiler for Ashley, who has no knowledge of stuff at the end of Data Squad. But um, Jeff Nimoy has mentioned that in doing the dub of Data Squad, he kind of threw in the random joke towards the end that like. Um, in his head cannon implies in his head cannon he likes the idea that Izzy is actually Yggdrasil and um I think that's a thing. I forget exactly the context for that. I, so, I um, really don't see same how voice. War Gra- Greymon X is wearing metal overalls, but okay. <laughs> it doesn't compute for me. It looks yeah. better. It looks like it in different shots. So okay, before we finish this quick impression segment, um because we haven't gone long, this movie I think is just a big it's a big open mystery. It's a big, like, so many things are like, whoop. but like one of the biggest ones I uncovered in looking into things, did, does anyone know, I mean, I'm going to tell you if you don't know, but does anyone already know who the writer of the movie was? No. No. So I don't, I don't know the name or I didn't recognize the name, but uh, Kazunori Ito was the writer of the Ghost in the Shell movie screenplay and has been like quoted, uh, has been cited in, um, um, there's this, uh, uh, Helen McCarthy is like an anime scholar, I think based in the UK. And she referred to this writer as one of the best screenwriters in anime. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. And I mean, Ghost in the Shell. So we're talking about like original Ghost in the Shell, right? <laughs> right the original Ghost in the Shell movie, which is based on a manga. But I think from what I've heard is a pe- I, I've not seen it. So like, I'm not the best judge about this. But what I've heard people say is the manga is like, okay, but not great. Whereas the original movie is amazing. And I think people apparently credit that to this writer. So no, huh? but I can see that because I can see that she, she, I don't know. They, him, it's a him. Uh, he wrote a uh, magical angel, creamy mommy, which sounds awful when I say it out loud. 
Uh, he did. <laughs> it's cre- only, mommy. Only mommy, when you say it out loud. It's, it's mom. It's mommy. Not. It's like M A M I. Not mommy. Not like mama. Like mama just killed a man. <laughs> um. Uh, anyway, I mean, dirty pear. Mason he, Nikoku. He, he, he has then, a long. There's a there's a long uh, history of thing. Apparently, like in the past two decades, he's mostly just worked on hack franchise stuff dot hack but uh but um yeah there's a long list of things i can actually see that now so basically everything he worked on in the 2000s was basically stuff happening in a digital world yeah um i it still does not quite explain why the writing was so terrible (laughs) (laughs) because the movie was plagued by production values uh, I don't know. I don't know if that quite explains the writing. I mean, but also I should mention that the according to everything, it's cited as having two different writers. Um, and the other writer, Miwa Kawasaki, um, I can't find any information about. So it's very possible that like the involvement of that uh, prestigious director is fairly limited, and you know maybe they just like helped a little bit and added some obscurity, <laughs> things not making sense, and then the actual. Cohesion that was was not there. Um, any any other quick impressions before you do did you feud? Daruman is still the cutest. You he has little he has little devil wings. <laughs> okay. And stubby arms. <laughs> He's a. <laughs> And now for a Digi Feud segment, we are going by the um, standard Family Feud rules this time. So not Fast Money, not a Rapid Series of Questions. Just one question this time and start off with a face-off. So Asher and Ashley will be the contestants and they will buzz in by making their best impression of a buzzer noise. And are you both ready? Sure. So this question, I should warn you... hmm, on the one hand, it's an easy question. On the other hand, it's a hard question. That doesn't help at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Who is your favorite ex-antibody Digimon from the X-Evolution movie? Uh, is that a buzz? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, Ashley. Durban? <laughs> okay, no, Asher. Um, War Greymon. That is the number one answer with oh, come 41 on. points. <laughs> How is Doraemon not there? Yeah, that what? It has to be the num- it has to be the number one answer. No, but Asher, it, if Doraemon was there, Jeff would have had to say yes and then oh, put right, it to right. place. Right. Yeah. So it's not there at all. Really? So yeah. yes. So don't say Daruman, because that would be a bad move. <laughs> I, I have to say, this movie is not that popular, so we did not get that many responses. So this isn't, oh. like, the most uh, valid polling sample, but uh, oh, it is what the listeners okay. have said, so... <laughs> That's bizarre. <laughs> well, yeah. Daruman's cute, like, you People know? may not think of him as an ex-antibody, maybe. What? But yeah, it's like, there's all, there's he, but he's, he's the he's the ex antibody. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Asher, do you want to keep playing? You need to guess three more, um, and if you don't guess all three of them, then Ashley gets a chance to steal it to get all the points. I should say <sighs> most of these I, are going to be easy, but there's one yeah. hard one. I'm not, not sure that affects your decision. Uh, no, I'll 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 keep it. You'll play. Okay. Yeah. So you get three strikes, zero strikes. Okay. All right. Ex antibody Digimon. <laughs> There's only so many. I know. That's why I kept it. At least how many? Ma- how many? I have to guess. There are three I have more to on guess. The there's there three even more on the board. Like enough for Asher to not get it, <laughs> like to get strikes. Oh, maybe um, not. No, there should be. I, there should be. I think. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Metal Garurumon. Metal Garurumon. Yeah. That's the number two. Right. Seriously, these people this have no taste. So <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Actually, n- number two and number three are tied. That just means I guess they're both number two. I just didn't... Tokomon? Are you serious? Are you serious? Tokomon over the Rumon? Y'all. <laughs> okay. Y'all, I can't even so, with you. <laughs> zero strikes and one more answer on the board. Um, Dukemon? One All strike. Right. One answer on the board left. Did he even have an antibody? I was very confused about this. He uh-huh. just suddenly yeah. did. Yeah, he I did? So. I, I, I could I think... not tell... Doesn't everybody at the end have an edge? I, I honestly so. have no idea. Basically, if they become 
a different version of the same. They of all themselves. looked the same to me. Okay. I think Dukemon definitely had an X antibody. Um, we can get into it later, but I'm pretty sure that's like the one thing that actually makes one of the most thing. One of the things that makes the most sense in the movie compared to other things that make even less sense. So, so did most of the Digimon that existed in the movie not have it? Yes. Okay. They were the ones that uh, were led to the new world. The ones that have the X antibody are the ones who were sh- left in the old world, but somehow made it to the new world. Okay, I didn't want to explain it in this segment, but um, <laughs> so the whole the whole project arc thing was that uh, Yggdrasil, you know, like as I explained at the very end of the movie, there are too many Digimon, so in order to for Yggdrasil to continue living, he wiped it wiped out Digimon, but chose like. Noah's Ark, that it's named after, chose a segment of, di- or a bunch of Digimon to be like, these are the chosen Digimon who will go to the new world with me, whatever. And, and then he killed them anyway. N- well, chose those Digimon and then attempt, and then with the X program, a program like just the X program, wiped out everyone. The X program being very different than the X antibody. The X antibody was what pe- the Digimon who were supposed to be wiped out developed a resistance they developed the X antibody as a resistance to the X program. Well, yeah, that's how medicine. That's how right, right. It's, it's, it's how, it's how resistance. That's how antibodies and diseases work. But it's confusing when, like, in the context of Digimon, having an X program and an X antibody, and it's hard to. Anyway, um, cause they sound very similar. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the Digimon that are left at the beginning of the movie, like, uh, it's kind of uh, set up by the the two sides meeting the Andromon faction and the um, who else on the other side? The like Wargreymon X. And, uh, it was Garudamon was on the other right, side. So, so, the, the, so, X. so those were those and are the X antibodies, and those are the ones. Right. Those are the Digimon who were shunned because they were not chosen, but they survived anyway. That was Garudamon. Anyway, so you have two. You have one strike. I but no, two strikes. Did not understand that explanation <laughs> whatsoever. Um, I have one basically, strike. One strike. Basically, I have two strikes left to use. Is right. Okay. It's basically Noah's Ark. I, I understand that part. I don't understand who was chosen from that explanation. I, I don't. But I don't it's okay. It was, I, I don't care. I, don't I care. think everyone who is not an X antibody Digimon in the movie was chosen. And like, I thought it was the opposite. No, no, it's that the X antibody Digimon. No, are, the, yeah, the X antibody Digimon themselves. are the ones that are not supposed to be Right. That, that's why. That's why Doraemon's being shunned by the Mushroom in the beginning. Okay. I, I thought the Digimon that were just like hanging out there were the Digimon that were originally there in the new digital world world and weren't chosen they were just already there oh yeah no i don't think there was like an initial inhabitants uh, okay it's bullshit <laughs> okay so uh, one answer left on the board <laughs> um alphamon <laughs> two strikes worth a shot yeah um, as i said this, this one this one's really hard um but there was a hint in I don't, guess, I don't, don't know I think I already got enough hints with you guys trying to explain the the X antibody to me because otherwise I would just be guessing like a ton of random Digimon that probably don't even have X antibodies. Um, well, I'm not going to guess Garudamon now since you didn't even remember that's who was on the other team. Unless you were trying to psych me out. <sighs> yeah. I no, 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 Jeff. I'm not Jeff, saying anything. I know you're not saying anything, and that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed okay. to talk. Um, <laughs> that's not what Steve Harvey does. I. He doesn't give hints either. He doesn't give hints. He just makes fun of contestants. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, as you've actually watched Family Feud? No. <laughs> that sounded defensive. <laughs> but I know that you're not supposed to give hints. <laughs> Bring on the beef, baby. That's what Steve Harvey would say. So wait, who were your guesses? I guessed... Alphamon... And Dukemon was my other incorrect Dukeman. guess. Okay. Which is wrong. They should have chosen him. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Best, char- best character in the, in the movie. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, I really have no idea. Garudamon is the only other one I can remember. Oh, yeah. seriously? All right. Are you, you did try to psych no, me no, out. I, I, did not, I did not try to deceive you. I, when I was saying I didn't remember who was on the other side, I knew it was Garudamon. I didn't want to say Garudamon, but I didn't remember the other Digimon is what I was trying to sidestep around. It's Kokuamon. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. the name. Yeah. Oh, my God. Listeners are garbage once again. <laughs> You're just so garbage. What again, is wrong with you? I repeat, no one likes this movie, so not many people voted. I can't believe people did not pick... Darumon, Omnimon. <laughs> Omnimon was basically the main character of this movie. Did he have an ex-antibody? At the end, he's an ex-antibody. Yep. He was? Yep. Yes. Uh, Alphamon gave it to him. Yeah. Very confused. Oh, that. Yeah. 
to seal himself. Okay, let's. Okay, so um, I, I guess this point doesn't. These points go to Asher. It doesn't really. Um, there's no like season tally for this, but. <laughs> <laughs> but West Coast gets to win once again. <laughs> Let's talk about the animation of this movie. This is, I think, the most uh, striking thing about the movie. We're going to get into the plot and everything else <laughs> later, but this is... Uh, striking. Yeah. Right. The, uh, we can definitely... I think we can all agree, of all of the things animated in the history of anime, <laughs> this is one of them. This is one of them. <sighs> the animation in this movie. Um, I think Andrew's already alluded to the fact that it is low budget. Um, I... I hesitate to call it low budget just because, um, like, I think it perpetuates a myth that I think, especially for CGI animation, is untrue that, like, just throw money at it will make it better. Um, like, so, I mean, we, we titled the, the episode after Pixar or whatever, and, like, I think that's a pretty clear comparison. Like, you can't just take a, a new animation, a new CGI animation studio, throw tons of money at them and expect them to make Pixar quality animation. It takes like years, decades of building up talent, building up knowledge, building up uh, resources, technology. Like, there's so many factors. And obviously, money can help you hire people that can help you get those things, but it takes time, takes all sorts of things. And so I hesitate to. Um, I'm curious if people have like uh, can point to interviews or things they've talked about uh, production values and how much money they had for this and how constrained they were. But in the absence of that, I hesitate to just say it looked crappy, therefore bad budget. Because this studio, this animation studio, the CG animation studio, um, I was gonna, I, I actually assumed before looking them up, I was like, I assume because I never heard of them, they're probably some crappy studio that hasn't really made anything of worth or uh, that actually looked good. But that's apparently not true. They, I have not seen it, but the uh, 2007 TMNT, Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, apparently Ash, they made that, that. And apparently, like I looked at a couple of clips and apparently you, you've seen it. It actually looked really good, the animation quality. Uh, I mean, it was, a, well, it was a decent movie, but it's definitely better than what we got in X Evolution. So, so when I looked at the critical reaction, people, lots of criticism for the plot and the story, but... Well, yeah, it was rushed. Yeah, in okay, terms of but, plot. But, but um, but apparently, anima- the the art style, the animation itself was apparently well regarded. And I just looked in, looking at a couple yeah, it was clips, pretty good. looking at a couple clips, I was like, there are people, and they look. It wasn't like uh, you know, super realistic, but it was like this. They have expressions and stuff. Yeah, this actually looks impressive. Yeah, yeah, and didn't didn't look awkward on Canny Valley Hell like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the uh, time uh, difference? Uh, yeah. Two years. So this was this was released in two thousand five. Oh, really? And TMNT was 2007. Um, yeah, so no idea like what the kind of, uh, you know, budget for both movies, the amount of time they had to work on them. This this was probably rushed. And like Andrew was saying, there are rumors of having tons of production issues, which totally makes sense. It definitely feels like <laughs> something that would. Yeah. Um, and the stuff, they did, the stuff they did before this movie, I had not really heard of, but also didn't look that terrible. Um, so there was a TV series. So it was, actually, this was their first feature length film but the things they worked on before were tv series and short films but the, there was a tv series in 2002 called zentrix and father of the pride in 2004 2004 oh god oh, really have you had you seen that i remember that i remember it it did not do wait wasn't that dreamworks so that that was okay so they that was like helmed by dreamworks and uh this company uh, imagey animation studios did the animation for like i think the creative guidance was from dreamworks supposedly when I read on Wikipedia. Yeah. So what thinking about the animation this movie made me think of was stories that I'd heard about Pixar and the way that their technology guides their creative processes. And, and specifically I'm thinking of stories I heard about that they one of the reasons they worked on Monsters Inc. was because of advances in their technology to render fur on mm-hmm. what's the blue guy? Mike Sully. Oh yeah. Mike is the eyeball. <laughs> Either like one. Wyskowski. And yeah, so so like being able to render the fur is what opened them up to doing that. And yeah, this movie it feels like the I feel like the Royal Knights and the X Digimon, most of the X Digimon, not all of them, but most of the X Digimon were rendered well and looked well. Yeah, because they were smooth metal. Right. I, th- I think that the animation in this movie worked well, and that smooth metal um, 
Andrew, on the other hand, is also metal and not smooth and... Ugh. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah, and some of the other characters, like Wizardmon, who is not smooth or metal, and it's just like, oh, okay, please don't make me look at you. Or Mon. More. Yeah, Mon too. too. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, it just feels like if this movie were to be, like, designed or produced well with the technology they had on hand, it would have focused on those characters to the exclusion of everyone else and not featured a Digimon like Doraemon that was rendered poorly all the time. I mean, yeah, they did not really have... The animation style did not go well with his fur and almost everything about him until it became Alphamon. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. But Ashley, he's your favorite, so... I think he was fine. <laughs> Doraemon's animation did nothing wrong. Yeah, all the other animations I agree with, but I think Doraemon's animation was like, no, it's not amazing, but it wasn't like, yeah, oh no, this has brought me out of the story. Like, <laughs> it's, it's true. It's not like a bunch of the other Digimon are like, this is horrendous, but like Doraemon is just like, this does not look good. Okay, I'm, I'll go along with you. And like, once you've accepted it, it doesn't get any worse after that. So it's like, fine, I guess. <laughs> I liked that um, CGI Sophimon had very feminine features. Oh, really? <laughs> Did it? Really? Yeah, I don't remember I feel that. like it's, it hit, the lips were really, really feminine. <laughs> okay, when you go through and take screenshots, you need to uh, take lots of screenshots of Sophimon's lips, lips. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> to try to get like a super close up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so any more animation? The water looked awful. Oh, yeah. They were, talk about but I could like, tell they were proud down. of that. I could tell they were proud of that water, though. They kept <laughs> using it. They were proud of that water. <laughs> they kept using it. They were in a forest, and suddenly they were on the water again. And I was like, what? Honestly, Why are you on the water again? Honestly, I always thought CGI water looked horrible until, like, around Cars, which was also, like, around 2005. Now they, no, wait, that can't be right. When did Cars come out? It's probably around then. 2006. Like, I feel like that was the first time I s thought water looked and remotely realistic. When when did this movie come out? 2005. Um, I'm, I mean, Finding Nemo came out in 2003. And... Yeah, but no, but the difference between Finding Nemo and uh, Cars is that Finding Nemo was underwater right, most there, of the there's time. A so difference, there's matter. a difference between light refraction underwater and seeing the surface of water. The surface of water is when, what's rendered here and looks terrible. Um, a lot of people compare the animation to... I, I think unfairly to PS1 era animation. I think it's wow. more more realistically PS2 era, but uh, uh, it's definitely better than PS1. Have you played a PS1 game recently? <laughs> I, think, I think I think maybe <laughs> what it is, is it's like about the level of like fancy pre-render cutscenes from PS1 era. Maybe like you might have like a really high budget fancy mm -hmm. PS1 era cutscene. Maybe to look like this. Maybe. I was more annoyed any any time that the animation tried to be cool and do like slow mo crap. I was like, no, stop. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Because I was thinking that actually, like the the actual like animation looks so crappy. The like a lot of the the models move around like they have no weight. Especially like Metal Gurumon, I think I noticed the most. I think Wargreymon X was mostly fine, and that's like part of their characteristics is how much they can like jump around really quickly. But like there are times where Metal Gurumon X is just like on the floor and then like flying up at like. Like, there's no acceleration. It's just like, doop, doop, like, okay, that's, it just makes them feel like they don't have weight or um, they don't feel like real objects. And that's definitely something that, like, has improved over time with people's understanding what makes people, what pulls them out of animation. But I did not notice that. But anytime they did slow mo, it just felt like it just looked hor horrible <laughs> and did not convey the sense of, like, what you normally use slow mo for, just like emphasizing a cool move. It was the opposite of that, is what it felt like. Oh, so you see, what my point I was trying to make was actually that, like, even though the animation was really bad, like, technically on lots of levels, that the um, direction of it was not so bad. That, like, the way fr scenes were shot and framed and everything was not you nearly said as shot. <sighs> Okay, there's not a literal camera shooting real people acting on things, but like it's still, uh, you could still say, I don't know, I don't think it's wrong to say like anime is shot. Anyway, the, the way, the way things are the way things are framed and storyboarded, um, I think 
still made things feel relative, somewhat coherent or competent. And I don't know, I, I, I can't remember too many of those instances, actually, where it slowed down. The one, the only one that like really sticks in my head is the when they're moving, when they're walking past Magnamon. Did you think it was really bad there? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when During like fights. Uh, yeah, like uh, War Greymon when he initially gets to the exit and all the foe Drumon. What is it called? De- the, Dex. They're, they're Dex Dur- Dora Greymon. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, those things are there. He's fighting them. There's a moment in the animation. There's at least one moment in the animation where it's like he comes up from the water and then it does like weird, jarring, slowy things. Weird, jarring, jarring, slowy things. Unless I'm misinterpreting it, it was actually supposed to be that it was sped up. In which case, neither way worked. So like... So now let's talk, we're going to walk through the movie. We'll start off with Act 1, which is the setup. And I'm, for this section, I'm I'm considering Act 1, you know, from the start of the movie, the Leoman scene, Leoman sacrifices himself, uh, Mushroomon bully Doramon, uh, the Royal Knights have a little Skype call in, in Joss Onega space. And then uh, the <laughs> Andromon, chosen Digimon, meet with the X Digimon, led by Orc Raymon X. Then that gets crashed by Omegamon. He tries to wipe them all out. And then War Grandma X passes on Tokemon to Doramon. What do people think about this? Wait this a second. Act? Okay, wait. Leo, you said Leoman was sacrificing himself, but the, wait. No, isn't it, he was is it, dying. Yeah, isn't it? He was just dying because he didn't have an X okay. antibody? Sure. <laughs> I, 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 I think of Leoman dying and I, I just autocomplete sacrifice. Um, <laughs> That no, he was literally trying to kill Doramon. Right, he start he, he was, he's chasing yeah. he's chasing Doramon down because what, what's been said about the plot is that, or I think what, what they're trying to, what I want to kind of do in walking through this is like find what they're trying to do, what they're trying to express, and to not actually express well. But I think what they're trying to set up for the scene is that is how normal Digimon are dying unless they've been chosen, unless unless they've been chosen or have an X antibody, and so his only choice is to get an X antibody. Wait, so does that scene take place in the old digital world? I also don't. I don't entirely buy this idea that like the digital world is a different space. Like when they're talking about the new digital world, I think that might just mean like, yeah, we've wiped everyone out. It's on a different server. They, they don't think they ever say like mm. there is a new server. Yeah, I think they're just talking like the new digital world is the era that has yeah. been brought by the X antibodies. But the if you read up on the backstory, it it says that it's a separate digital world what backstory there is no there is no official backstory like there are recaps and summaries that have tried to extract meaning from it and i think some of them don't necessarily do it so well it's flavor text from like the card game or something well okay that's another thing that like there there are lots of characters in this movie that have flavor text and null canon lore or whatever that doesn't quite match up with this movie and how things are explained in the movie which i think we'll get to um yeah so i don't i don't entirely I don't think the movie gives enough, um, doesn't entirely spell out whether it is a physically, like, entirely new world, it is a new server, new data, everything. I think it makes a lot more sense to just, like, yeah, try to wipe out everyone, and whoever's left, it's the new era. I think that makes things, like, a lot more sense. Yeah, because, I mean, otherwise, it would have to be that, like, there are entry points, and all the X right. antibody Digimon are, like, entering through those points. <laughs> Or like data is copied over and it's like, well, how do things get copied without anyone copying? Like, it, I think it makes a lot right. more sense. It, like it like, doesn't make yeah. sense if they don't want the X antibody Digimon in the world. Like if there was an easy way to keep them out, then that would be happening right. <laughs> way yeah. more frequently. So I think it makes a lot more sense for the X antibody to be this like kind of Jurassic Park-esque life will find a way. Like the Digimon them wiped out, some of them will evolve to get this immunity to the program and then stay around in the world. It makes a lot more sense than like... Like if if it's if he could if it was a, actually a new digital world space you could just copy the Digimon over and delete the old one and then like yeah I, I don't know I, I like thinking about his errors I think it makes a lot, more, a lot more sense but the whole writing of this movie is so obtense so Obte- <laughs> obtense yeah so obtuse <laughs> Int- intensely obtuse there we go I like obtense I think that should be a, a word that we use <laughs> it feels kind of like to get like a more extreme intense obtense. <laughs> So wait, but this this scene makes absolutely no sense when you watch it, though. The Leomon scene? Yeah. What about it doesn't make sense? If you, if you haven't watched the rest of the movie already, you have no idea what's going on. True facts. Right. I think it, it's supposed to be setting up that <laughs> Digimon need X antibody to survive. But yeah, it doesn't. I guess it makes somewhat more sense later on. 
it doesn't really do that job well. Mm, and no. I mean, yeah, it relies on you to like piece together from watching the rest of the movie what that scene was supposed to. I, I think mean. The, so many things in, like all the exposition in this movie is hoping you will piece it together in little pieces and fragments that don't fit together well. Sure. And yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that just like just makes no sense even without the context of the, with the context of the rest of the movie. Uh, I can't remember it there, but I mean it's also just like it's kind of it's just like silly and absurd that the framing of like Leomon chasing him down and then like him putting up a little little resistance and then be like okay I guess I'll just die and then like as soon as Leomon <laughs> dies then Doraemon's like no it's like he was just trying to kill you like yeah I was uh, mostly confused I was like Doraemon why do you you don't care about him yeah, like was, he <laughs> wanted to kill you <laughs> it's so cheesy and stupid it's like no no death oh no. <laughs> And yeah, and I mean, like the I mean, part of like a central like theme to the movie going on going forward is that, that how much Doraemon is affected by the Digimon that have tried to help him and have like passed on their will to him to survive. But like, it wasn't, Leomon wasn't here to help. Leomon was trying to kill him, and then was just like, I guess you'll survive. Ugh, Leomon. <laughs> they just needed him to be Leomon. Yeah, they just need they just need to kill off Leomon. Obligatory. It didn't make any sense for the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so they just need to put it in there at some point. Um. Yeah, the Mushroomon bullying Doraemon, I think, was also supposed to be spelling out how much the not chosen Digimon are picked on and stuff. But like, it's so unclear that the Mushroomon are chosen and Doraemon is exactly. Isn't. I'm like, why would Mushroomon be chosen? I don't understand. <laughs> like, yeah, it's so <laughs> random, and like, there's never any explanation given because I guess it's supposed to be like no one really knows the Jostle's criteria or whatever. Um, although if it is, you know, if Project Arc is really that much modeled after Noah's Arc, I guess it would make sense if it's like. A couple of every Digimon. Yeah, but there are a kajillion Mushroomon. Yeah, it's true. There are a bunch of them. Yeah, but they can digivolve into various uh, Digimon. I don't think that's a reason. Later on. <laughs> um, yeah. Probably not the reason, though. No. <laughs> Probably poor poor writing is the reason, but... Uh, yeah. I mean, we look, we have creative power. We can make a reason for that. Um... My guess is that the Mushroomon are so quick-lived, they just multiplied really fast. I think mm. they just wanted to have the Digimon that are beating up the Mushroomon eat them, because Mushroomon are food. <laughs> Wait, what? There was definitely at least one Digimon that ate a Mushroomon. Oh. Yes, yes, there oh, okay. was. It was that horrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there are interesting concepts going or like flying around with the the fact that everyone who's been left has either been chosen by Yggdrasil or has like basically chosen them uh, themselves through their own willpower to survive and develop their ex-antibody. I think it's really interesting, but having that like, like, and, and I think there's like this is a terminology used in that first scene where like Mushroom are talking about how like we're chosen and you're not. And like, I think it, it kind of harkens back a little bit to the Digidestined and, you know, in Japanese being called the chosen children and everything and it's using the same verb at Abu ch to choose in Japanese and stuff. And so like, I don't know, mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting like evolution of the concept of choosing from, from the main series when they were kids and stuff and we've always kind of found it a little bit or i've always found it a little bit like not super great the way they like you know like they choose a couple digimon and then everyone else is like totally unchosen like oh you guys aren't cool you're not as cool as these guys that are chosen and zero two tries to kind of curb that by being like everyone gets a digimon and then they try they forget about it and here i think they're trying to fight the back that a little bit because like it's all about the digimon who are trying to survive despite not being chosen right i mean i think it's interesting that in the normal series do we normally think about the digimon as being chosen no <laughs> like, yeah no uh, but i guess they are like in adventure they are they don't refer to it that way but like they are literally they're the digimon chosen, that are born for yeah. that task yeah but i'm saying that like because it's never framed that way it's whatever but in this it tries to at least be like okay yeah i'll, I'll bring i'll take that concept head on <laughs> yeah mm. uh, it's frustrating because like like all those things are like oh this is an interesting idea that they explored but like explored in a completely not interesting way <laughs> or like <laughs> not well it's like oh yeah i feel like the, the potential in ideas like that to be explored is like oh maybe it'll the, the way they explore it will be cool itself and it no it just wasn't so nope um <laughs> I wrote down some lines from the um, the confrontation between Angemon and between the chosen Digimon and the ex Digimon that Omegamon crashes, and then Wargamon tries to like a oh, Wargamon's trying to like convince the the chosen Digimon that they like should like Yggdrasil is their common enemy. And I guess right. there are multiple levels of the writing being obtuse because I mean obviously that hasn't been this hasn't been officially licensed or subtitled or dubbed or anything. So we're relying on disparate fan sub groups. I think we between the four of us we've watched different fan subs, but um. 
like this. So, so here, here's the wording from, <laughs> from the fan subs I watched. Everything occurred because Yggdrasil's X program was executed. Even this new world will be contaminated because Yggdrasil has started hunting down Digimon with the X antibody. Then Eightmon's like, that's a lie. Then World Grandma continues. They're going to wipe out all X Digimon. Within that, the X program will release itself in this world, knowing that isn't it apparent to conclude that... Oh, wait. Crap, I actually understand this now. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down and read it multiple times. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Um, so I guess what he's actually saying is that, like, he's going to, like, Yggdrasil is going to use the X program to wipe out all Digimon now. Like, not even not even choosing some people to be, not choosing Digimon to be immune from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I'm going to cut this all out. Sorry. <laughs> I can't believe that made sense as I got, oh, God. No, I think you should leave it in. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, I, I guess that kind of encapsulates the whole experience. I guess I should finish. So yeah, so then poor Grandma next f- finishes. Knowing that isn't it apparent to conclude that Yggdrasil itself is our common enemy. Um, and right, so I guess the point of what he's trying to do there is convince the the not ex Digimon that they're about to be wiped out too. And mm-hmm. I, I guess what he's saying there is that like before the X program was deployed and some chosen Digimon were like excluded from it. And mm-hmm. now it's like, oh, it's going to be cho- it's going to be deployed again and you won't be immune to it. But that's not what happens at all. Like, Instead, the Royal Knights are wiping them all out, and then the deck store Greymon wipes them all. So, like, whatever. Sure, that passage <laughs> makes some sense after reading it four times, but even then, it doesn't fit the rest of the movie. Yeah. I mean, I feel like maybe if less of the Digimon had been wiped out, I'd be willing to buy that more. But, like, the way they set it up, I thought, was that there's only, like, 2% of the Digimon survived or something. Well, what I think what I think is supposed to be going on there is that you also plan to wipe out you know, 98% of Digimon, or 99 maybe, 99% of Digimon, with 1% being chosen, like the Mushroomon. <laughs> it's weird that they're a go-to example, but that's how they set it up. And, uh, um, and But instead, there is another 1%, or whatever percentage, another chunk of Digimon who survived through own willpower, through developing X antibody. And the presence of those is what makes Jigasu be like, no, the pran, the, the pran, God. The plan did not go as according <laughs> to schedule, so I need to improvise and do it again and this time wipe out everyone because it didn't work the first time that's how i understood that it's the dumbest thing i've ever heard it is yeah, it doesn't. Uh, so okay so in conclusion of this this act like this is supposed to be the setup this is supposed to be like setting the stage making us understand the conflict making us understand like what's going on in this world and instead i don't think just from watching this first act that's clear at all um <laughs> Even, like, we have to discuss it, having watched the rest of the thing, piecing things together, rereading passages multiple times, like, ugh. (laughs) And, yeah, so it ends with Tokemon being passed to Doramon. I don't know. Their friendship is apparently a thing. I mean, Tokemon's cute to be around, I guess. No one wants to take care of Tokemon. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You don't love his teeth? He loses them and it makes him creepier. Wait, he loses them? When he becomes ex Tokemon, he doesn't have them anymore. Oh, Wait, really? really? I mean, you don't see them anymore. <laughs> it was weirding me out, guys. It was super <laughs> weird. But like normal Tokemon doesn't really show them until he, you know, like he still has little fangs sticking out, uh, and and ex Tokemon didn't. Ex Tokemon didn't, <laughs> and it was super weird. <laughs> really weirded me out. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Let's move on to Act 2. So, okay, so Act 2, this is the uh, confrontation. Um, I also try to break this out into the, because I think like the three act structure is how Western movies and stuff are structured. And so I tried to also look at the like more Japanese. Isn't it a force? X structure. No, it's only three, but the the Japanese structuring is a little bit different. The uh, Kisho Ten Ketsu format, which is four, right? So, so the, the general three act structure in Western cinema is set up, confrontation, resolution, um, and that roughly correlates to like the Japanese Kisho Ten Ketsu kind of. If you combine the the Ten and Ketsu into both being resolution, but anyway. So the second act, the confrontation, this is like really the bulk of the movie. Like it has a couple different, I think there are basically two major side pieces. There's the like fighting against Omegamon over the water and then the uh, Dexter Greymon invasion stuff. So, so yeah, so Omegamon is chasing War Greymon X, uh, but then I guess gets distracted, need to go to a Royal Knights meeting and then War Greymon X <laughs> and Metal Greymon X meet up and talk. And I was kind of surprised that like Metal Greymon X was like you know siding with the royal knights a little bit like you mean metal guru monix did i say war Gremon x 
No, you said Metal Greymon. Oh, that would be cool, though. I wish I'd have seen that. <laughs> I mean, there is one. In my notes, I've just written MGX and WX, WGX, which is much easier than saying all those names. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just say Metal. So, uh, yeah, Metal is surprisingly um, believing in the Royal Knights, which I think I think there's like a theme running through the movie. And also, I think running through most of the incarnations of the Royal Knights, which we'll eventually get to, that I think when Digimon uses the Royal Knights, they like the recurring idea of unjust orders and like mm. this this group of Digimon being defined by their justice and honor. And what do they do when their orders themselves are unjust? Um, I mean, obviously, that's like central to this movie of like Omega Mon's arc is him being like, no, I don't question these orders at all to questioning them after killing Dukemon, questioning them, questioning them, questioning them, to then eventually even gain the ex-antibody himself. And I think that's supposed to be the culmination of his uh, his arc in that regard. And that's why he's the main character, except not. <laughs> yeah, you, you mentioned that before we recorded that, like, it, the movie's a lot better if you think of Omegamon as the main character, but... I think the movie... No, the movie is better if you think of nobody as the main character. <laughs> well, I was surprised... Everyone's not the main character. Nobody's the main character. Well, what surprised me when I actually went to watch it is that, like... I was like, wait, isn't War Greymon X the main character? <laughs> like, they're they're kind of yeah, they're they're it's it's so fragmented and split. And I don't I don't think it's like a good thing. I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing though. Uh, I think it's bad if you try to think that there's a main character. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's I, definitely not Doraemon <laughs> because it's not anybody. <laughs> I remember one of the big complaints in the um the Plinket or Red Letter Media reviews of the Star Wars prequels. I think specifically referring to The Phantom Menace, the first prequel, was that it doesn't have a main character like the original Star Wars movies do. do. And I think that's like a thing that a lot of people echo that feeling of. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing, though. Yeah, but at least with Star Wars, you have you mostly focus on the light side. Yeah, I think it's I think it's more interesting in this regard to like focus on the, all the different sides. And yeah, but it ends up being a mess. Right, it's definitely a mess, and I think, I think the problem with ha- focusing on not having a strong focus on a central character and having lots of disparate, almost secondary, almost primary characters is that it feels like trying to have their cake and eat it too. Um, it reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy XII, I guess, what comes to mind. Maybe even ten as well. A bunch of the Final Fantasies, apparently, where they have a like most interesting character who's not the main character, and the main character is this like boring, bland player in- insert avatar kind of who is basically just there to be like oh, i'm along with this cool journey um that's i mean titus is more than that but also Yuna is so much more interesting and should have been the main character but she got her own game she did but like, like in the main in the original the original game is much better and it's full of titus being this is my story it's like no it's not no it's not it's totally Yuna's story it's, yeah <laughs> um, get out of here titus <laughs> but it's definitely much more there's a much bigger imbalance there in 12 where it's like Vaughn is Vaughn is almost nothing like and Ash Ash do they pronounce it Ash instead of Ash I don't know anyway. I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I don't know I, I think I think that's definitely what it feels like here too that it's like want to have Dormon to have like a cute avatar on the poster and <laughs> to have this like big twist at the end like oh he was actually a royal knight wow he was wow. awesome oh, no. Um, but then, like, they they actually want a strong character like Wargaman X to be a strong moral viewpoint that is always, like, unwaveringly good and protecting the Digimon. And they also want a, a primary character who is, learns to question, like, goes from being... Conflicted. Yeah, like, er, yeah, like, has an arc from going tr- totally trusting of Yudrasil to totally rejecting it. And, yeah, I feel like it's just a sign of the movie being pulled in so many different directions, why it works so poorly. Uh, I'm trying to think of other important things that happen in this act in particular. I thought the, the Dorumon and Tokumon fighting Omegamon, and they're basically just like attacking Omegamon, Omegamon's like, uh, why are you doing this? Like, you guys have no hope against me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it was, an, I guess that's like the, the first, really like the first bit of evidence he has about like why, because I think that encapsulated the whole like, you know, it's it's represent representative of the Digimon who were w- chosen to be wiped out, but who survived through their own grit and developing the X-Antibody. You know, like, they have no hope against fighting Omega, but they do it anyway. They keep getting beaten down, but they keep doing it anyway. And he doesn't understand that at all. I don't know, there's some interesting parallels there to real-life situations of, like, privilege and people in privilege not understanding, like, fundamentally not understanding at all how people who are not in that privilege act and still getting to have control over their lives. Ugh. Don't want to bring real world politics into too much, but uh, it's kind of hard not to watch this movie and be like, "Yep, 
that's xenophobia for you. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. This movie totally does not have anything to do with anything today. What? So, uh, oh, okay. Oh, God. I need to talk about Metal, Metal Guruman X, like sacrificing himself to protect Tokuman and Doraemon and passing on his X antibody. It was antibody. pointless. P- passing on his X antibody to, to Tokuman to save him, to revive him. Okay, first of all, the first axis in which is BS is that why does the X antibody revive Tokemon? Like, that's not a mechanic that I guess fits into anything else that's been explained in the movie. And also, yeah, like, ugh, Metal Gurumon just comes back later, not dead, not having lost his antibody. So him like, both nothing dying... nothing happens. Yeah, him both dying and giving up the antibody had no consequence. Ugh. But this also raises the question, wouldn't wouldn't that save Leomon? Could Leomon have been the main character? <laughs> Could uh, Doraemon just have passed on his ant- antibody to Leomon and then died, but then not died and stuck around? And But basically, if Leomon actually killed Doraemon, none of this would happen. Uh, I don't know so about that. everything is Leomon's fault. That, that logic seems about as uh, convoluted as his movie. Well, yeah, but uh. Doraemon is the cause of everything in this movie, and Leomon could have prevented, like, half the stuff from happening in this movie especially with all the dex doru greymons um yeah i guess i was gonna say that actually like doramon is not i mean he he without doramon's intervention they don't save anyone but yeah i guess it is through um magnamon ca- capturing doramon and then like getting the data from him that's what he also uses to create uh what's the name dex door dex doragoramon which then I think hatches. it's Raymon. No, it's uh, it's different. There's okay. This is another okay. <laughs> it's Dexter Graymon. No, it's not. No, okay. <laughs> this, okay, I'm gonna go down this this well of BS, this well of nonsense. Okay, so the the Doramon forms that we see in this movie. There's Doramon, Dorugamon, Dorugreymon, and then Alphamon. But there's also a there's also a Doramon form that's not shown in this movie, which is Doragoramon, which is basically the the mega in place of Alphamon. And the evil forms that Yudrasso makes, the the one they fight, the like uh, that they fight before they get to the main chamber, that Omega Man Alpha fight, is Dex Doragoramon, which is the like Dex version of the Mega form. And the army of things that are flying around are Dex Doragoramon. So there's and there's actually another one that they fight at the very end, which is Dexmon. Yes. Um, but that's. Okay, so that, that makes some sense. What what I find really the most the most BS and nonsense nonsensical angle of this is that Dex. So Dex is what they say in Japanese and everything. It's Dexu, Dexu Doraman, whatever. And the way that's stylized in the official Romaji, like in the official cards and everything, is that Dex is actually Death X. So like I don't know if you guys in your subtitles had like if they would have mentioned Dex Doraemon, it might have said like Death X Doraemon, and it's like <laughs> that's not. Ugh, that's not how they say. It's not what this. Uh, that anyway. is incredible. <laughs> and also, like, if you look up, there's like an official kind of evolution called Death X Evolution, which is like supposed to what? be like if you if you Google Death X, Death X Evolution, you can find that like supposedly according to the null canon lore or whatever, like Dex Doru Greymon, the things that are flying around in the army are supposed to actually be like Doru Greymon going through Death X Evolution, which right. <laughs> But like that makes this makes me so frustrated in like how BS it is because dying and then coming back as an X evolution form or coming back as an X form is exactly what Dukeman does. It's not some like in the movie itself, it is not presented as this like Dex or Death X. It's just like it's presented as like if you're about to die and you have enough willpower, you come back as an X antibody. And yet you look up this deck stuff and it's like there's this alternate death x evolution blah, 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 and it's like oh okay so that's what i was alluding to before when you were like oh if you look up the backstory and the other the cards and stuff it con- and like yeah it contradicts it because that's like a totally different concept it's not even like they use those forms but they're totally different connotation in this movie like it's, it's the same co- similar concepts it's just usually the media doesn't exactly use right. it, it doesn't word exactly for line word. Up. It's tough, though, with this, because usually when things don't line up one-to-one with the card game stuff, like the media, the anime, or whatever, has its own internal logic that makes sense, and we don't need to refer to the other stuff to make sense of it. But this one, you need to. No, you don't need to. But it itself, on its own, doesn't really make that much sense. Ugh. Yeah. So a bunch of... A, Tons of stuff happens in the second arc, second act. I keep I keep defaulting to arc because we talk about arc so much, but tons of stuff happens in this act, but mainly the Dex Door Greymon that, that are hatched. There's a big invasion. Doramon digivolves twice into Dora Greymon. In like five minutes. Yeah. Dukemon comes back as Dukemon X opens a portal for Dora Greymon to get away. Except we don't know how. Opening how a portal? How does Dukemon come back? 
oh, opening the portal. I was like, opening the portal is like the thing that makes the most sense of this movie. Um, yeah, Duke Mon coming back. Oh, right. Duke Mon coming back, I think, makes sense in the sense that like Duke Mon being on the verge of death and then being reborn as an X antibody. But he disappeared when Omnimon, sure, I mean, sure, Omega Mon sure. killed him. But like maybe the data reformed, whatever. I think that is similar to the concept of, you know, a bunch of Digimon being wiped out by the X program and surviving with the X antibody. It um not totally doesn't make sense because like yeah because it wasn't like Duke Mon wasn't killed by the X program he was killed by Omega Mon's attack right like I don't know just death doesn't make any sense in this nope. world because sometimes the bodies are still there sometimes they're not. <laughs> So, so the, the third, let's talk about the third act of this movie. This is the resolution, but also like the, the main conflict, The also including the big twist. Oh my God, guys, did you know that Doramon is actually Alphamon? Whoa. Whoa. <gasps> Whoa my Spoilers. Boy. This movie's so cool now that you know that, it don't, isn't it? Like, <laughs> it's so cool. It's got nothing on Cyber Sleuth. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, we shouldn't reveal what that is, but the, uh, the Alphamon reveal in that game is actually a lot cooler. <laughs> a lot more WTFE too. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot more out of the blue. <laughs> yeah, that came out of nowhere. It was also a little bit in- Utena movie-esque. If you know what, what? I'm thinking of, Ashley. Ashley, do you know what I'm thinking of? Who, what? Isn't there a car involved? Yes. So I'm thinking of Utena, the Utena movie tr- transforming into a car. Um, How it does, what does that have to do with this? Because that's the alpha There's mind. a lot of layers <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. going so, on here. Getting back to this movie, um, <laughs> this, this third act, um, I'm considering that when... Third disc three. <laughs> yeah, it's not a JRPG. Um, the third act is, I'm considering everything that happens in once uh, Duke Mines open the portal for Doro Greymont to go up and confront Yggdrasil. Um, and yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of like things that were done, things that happen like... Omega Mon fights Doro Greymon until he evolves into Alpha Mon. Then they go together and they fight one form, the next form, and blah, 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 blah. Kind of like JRPG final battle boss forms. But <laughs> it's totally a JRPG. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Even the, even the, when the most JRPG thing that I thought happened was actually when Wizard Mon, I guess this is in an act two, my bad, but when Wizard Mon, like, you know, uses his staff magic to very slowly carry Daruman to the exit. I'm like, this reminds me of all those dumb missions you have to do where it's like, protect an, an somebody. Very Yeah, like an yeah. escort mission where they're very slowly <laughs> moving something and you're just supposed to shoot everything that <laughs> comes out. <laughs> uh. Basically what that was. <laughs> yeah, I think, I'm trying to think of things to say about this, this third act. I feel like in some ways it's, isn't it's, even. It's kind of like the least interesting. It like it is. Yeah, everybody agrees. Yggdrasil just so bad. No, no, they don't. <laughs> I mean, Ma- Magnumon lets them pass, but is like informs Yggdrasil. Like he's not. Is totally not on the same page as them. It's kind of like I'll let you guys go. Yeah, to but like, he's the least interesting one in this movie. Like he's given the least amount of anything. Uh, of the four world nights, <laughs> this movie he is the least developed. I okay. That's a that's a big thing. That it was just that was disconnected from my memory. My memory of this movie was that. If not all the Royal Knights, because I think I knew that at this point in the timeline, in this at this point in in two thousand five, I mean, all the Royal Knights had not been revealed. There was still like one that hadn't been revealed yet, Jessmon, I guess. And so like I knew that they wouldn't all be in this movie. I thought at least most of them were, but no, it's just four. It's just um, four. And I think we were, I think Andrew and I were talking about this before we actually hit record. But um, the credits list Lord Nightman, or sorry, Lord Nightman slash Crusader Man as having a Japanese voice, and so like well, sorry, as having a voice, and so it's like uh, was that. Let us know. Write us. Write us in the comments if you noticed Lord Nightmon having a voice because we did not. Was Lord Nightmon there at all? In the credits, I didn't think so. so. Like on screen, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just like a random voice without a face or something at some point, like in one like the early Skype calls or something. Uh, yeah, maybe. Nah, but by two thousand five, they only had eight of the twelve. Oh, okay. There are twelve. Jesus. Yeah, it's supposed to be like Night of the Round. I, I don't know enough about the Royal Knights. No, there's 13. Apparently Night Night of the Round is um, a Final Fantasy VII terminology. I should say Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> um, you are such a loser nerd, you know that? Like, so, it's just so sad. <laughs> oh, apparently in different stories, there are different numbers of Knights of the Round Table, ranging from 12 to more than 150. Okay, Jesus. That's a big table. Yeah, that's like, a, that's like the... Um, AKB48 parody in Atmon, which has 407 
idols in it level of absurdity. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, the, like, ugh, even in this act, like, Omega Mon and Alpha Mon having their argument is kind of just, like, Omega, we've seen Omega Mon expressed out up until this point, and then he's just like, I guess before Alpha Mon is formed, um, just fighting Dora Gray Mon is just like, nope, I'm not gonna, like, it's just... I don't know. I feel like their conflict was contrived. They'll like, if I win, that'll confirm things. But if you win, you can go to Jocelyn. It was just, I don't know, whatever. I didn't see a reason. It just felt forced to give Dorogramon a reason to like be reborn as Alphamon to need to digivolve. And and then especially the turn of like, oh, well now you're Alphamon. Okay, I guess that's cool. Let's go together. It, um, that, that felt forced. It also just like the idea of Alphamon being, so in the lore of this movie, even though there are like eight other Alpha Overall Knights that are not shown, they do have like screen. I, I didn't count the number of screens. Actually, I think it's nine that weren't shown. Well, yeah, I didn't count the number of screens. So like, it's unclear how many they, they're implying are other World Knights. But like this idea that Alphamon is this like, I forget what they say exactly, but like when Alphamon forms and they're like, oh, you are Alphamon, but like we thought Alphamon didn't exist or whatever. And it's like, oh. This idea that you have a member of this organization that doesn't exist, like, the, the <laughs> World Knights as a concept is so, so absurd in almost every iteration. Um, it really is. Yeah, I'm interested to see how, because a lot of these ideas that are explored here about the Royal Knights and dealing with unjust orders and all this stuff is explored in Sabres. It's explored every single time that the Royal Knights appear. Every single time. My recollection was it, is it was executed better in Data Squad. Um, and also in Cyber Sleuth. But you have it in Frontier, you have it in Savers, you have it in Cyber Sleuth. You probably have it in a, a try. Yeah, that's I really don't want to try to go down that route again. Oh, just to be the try. same. Because, <sighs> yeah, we, we know that there's a Jocelyn. We know that there are a bunch of d- characters who are also Royal Knights present. Uh, um, but, yeah, I guess it, it's actually weird looking back at the history of the Royal Knights that Frontier did not explore those ideas of an unjust of Royal Knights. Because the Royal Knights in Frontier have the most evil, malicious orders. And yet there's like, nope, yeah, we're just evil. Okay, cool. They sort of tried to touch on it, but not really. I guess it's right at the end. Crusader Mon starts to question a little bit. And then, and then of course, uh, Lusamon just backstabs them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this final act. It. I was thinking when they're when they're confronting the Jostle's core or whatever, and they're both standing there, it made me think about how, like, I mean, this is just a structure. This is, I guess I shouldn't fault the, this movie for it because it's true of all Digimon stuff, but, like, they're going... And they want answers from Yajasil, which obviously apparently can't give them answers. And they're just like, okay, it's not giving us answers. I guess we attack it now. And I was like, what? That's that's how, that's the only way you have to deal with problems is just kill it? That does not seem yeah, good. Yeah, pretty much. That yeah. was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I guess they don't, I forget how, how it actually plays out. I guess they're about to attack it and then it turns into a dragon thing anyway. So No, I'm pretty sure they attack it first. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> And then apparently killing Yajasil just like resets the world to make everything happy. And that's how everything's resolved. Cool. They killed God. They did. Yeah. Still not as amazing as what happens in Savers, though. See, I don't... We'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, this idea that like Yajasil is the God of the digital world, I guess I'd find more appealing if it were rooted more in digital terminology. You know, if it was like the server administrator of the world or something, you know, like... Because that, that's clearly what's harking to a little bit. That it's like control of the the digital network and i feel like it's just obscured in nonsense by being like it's the god the god of the digital world like i get that you need that to hype it up and make it seem like a bigger deal but yeah well wikimon says that it's referred as the god of the digital world and says that it's the mysterious host computer that rules over the digital world yeah i got that implication from this movie that like because yeah the, the the conversation at the very end I did. I was kind of surprised how much it kind of neatly wrapped up one of the themes that Omega, that I guess Dukemon X is explaining that Yggdrasil needed to kill, like started killing off Digimon, starting executing Project Arc because it wanted to live. And in in that regard, it was just like all the other Digimon they've we've been focusing on, like the Digimon that developed the antibody, etc. It just wanted to live. Um, still didn't make it right, which kind of implied there, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah. It uh also there's a problem this movie has throughout all of its its writing, which is just like characters randomly have information without any reason for them to have it. Like how does Dukemon X know this now about Yggdrasil's plans? Like oh there, there's stuff early on in Act One where no, I guess Act Two, where um 
War Grandma X like mentions Project Ark and Duke Mon's like, you know Project Ark's name? And it's like, yeah, I don't know how, like, how does he know the name? I get, I, maybe that is actually How do explained. any of them know the name? I, I think it actually might, might have mentioned Bio Megamon. But like, yeah, if Yajasu does not communicate with them, how do they even get orders? Maybe they get messages. That's plausible. <laughs> I keep being like, this doesn't okay. make sense. Okay, I guess there is there is a possible explanation for it, not spot out by the movie. Well, I mean, it's annoying. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess it's just like, do as I say. Don't know, don't question why I said it to you. Just know that you're supposed to do this. <laughs> yeah. Orders, well, it's hard, like, it's, it's hard to like have any appreciation for their mindset in that situation. Since we don't know, like, since the concept of the Royal Knights organization doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like, for all we know, Omegamon has been born to be Omegamon to always be a part of the Royal Knights. You know, so, like, it's not like, if there was, like, a character backstory there of, like, you know, this Digimon who grew up idolizing the Royal Knights and wanted to be like them one day and then join the organization or something like that at all would give some context to things. But instead, it's just like, we are Royal Knights. This is how Royal Knights act. It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Um... Uh, I mean, I guess giving Omega Man that arc of question things after he kills Duke Man and everything is as close as we can get to that while still maintaining the DBS nature of the Royal Knights. All right, and so now on social media, we asked people for their three word reviews of this movie, anyone who can recall it. <laughs> and. <laughs> We got a couple responses, so we're going to go through them now. So starting on Facebook. Zeke says, I like Doraemon, and then finishes with just not the movie, lol. <laughs> it's, it's basically Ashley. Yeah. Lucas says, great looking cutscene," And Nathan says, silly, strange business. <laughs> That's a good summary. Great looking PS2 cutscene. <laughs> PS 1.5. Yeah. I was, I just, it made me think about now how, um, the Final Fantasy movie recently, the, um, Kingsglaive thing. Yeah. Did, wait, Ash, did you see that? Yeah. Did yeah. you see that, sir? Oh. Yeah. What'd you think? Um, I enjoyed it, but, um, I mean, the graphics are incredible. <laughs> when did the Advent Children come out? I don't remember. Yeah, Advent Children is a long time ago. It also looks, still looks incredible. Even, uh, uh, the Spirits Within looks incredible. Oh my god, this came out the same year. <laughs> same year as what? Oh god, you're right. Avon Children came out in 2005. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh. Alright, that's the child. That's how you know this movie is actually garbage. Avon Children. <laughs> okay, alright. That's not fair. Like, comparing <laughs> other things to Final Fantasy's unbelievable <laughs> graphics is. That's, right. that's just. That's not cool. Yeah. Like, I assume there's a whole... Final Fantasy's garbage stories, though. <laughs> Advent, Children, hey. Advent Children is a good call, like, a good um, nostalgic okay, retread. Children is good if you've played 7. Right, Maybe Kingsglaive is good if no, you've not, played... No, no, no. no. <laughs> the thing with Kingsglaive is you... <laughs> Final Fantasy 15 is good if you've seen Kingsglaive. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, chapter yeah. 1 doesn't make sense. That's true, yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, what I was bringing up Kingsley just to be like, that is also something that is... Uh, I mean, Kingsley was much more trying to be its own cinematic experience. Like this, um, maybe at some point was, but like clearly seems like it only has a people if you're into Digimon a lot. And Kingsley was like, it's going to be like a full movie. We're going to get, where the dub is going to get fancy <gasps> actors who have who are like really have been Game of, Thro Game of Thrones and like high prestige TV. <laughs> and yet... The movie is basically, I think it would have been a fine opening cutscene, <laughs> like a fine, super long cutscene, but like, yeah, like I wish that can, they should have put that on the disc, man. And then they was, just should have been able to play that before well, playing like, the game. Yeah. I think, I think the King Clay story was enough, con there's enough story content for a cutscene extracted into a big movie. X evolution. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> X evolution. Uh... We tried. But at the same time, I don't, I still don't understand anything that happened in King's Leave. Like, I feel like I didn't have enough context of anything. It was obtuse. And <laughs> I, feel, I feel like if we had a similar discussion about King's Leave, we could probably, like, if, did you come out of this discussion understanding X Evolution more? Yes. Uh, every time. Oh, you're talking to her. <laughs> every time that, like, probably if I had rewatched it, I'd be like, okay, yes, again, things make sense. Like, I think that's why I watched it so many times. And when I was younger, too, because I was like, okay, it makes more sense the more times you watch it. <laughs> but, like, 
Right. That doesn't necessarily make it better. It's just like, no, sure, sure, okay. I know. I'm just thinking like maybe Kingslave <laughs> would have been a similar level of if we like unpacked it enough. Be like, okay, I understand what they're going for in all these scenes. That's true. I have not rewatched Kingslave, so perhaps upon a rewatch, it would make more sense. Yep. So let's continue with uh, three word reviews from Twitter. So uh, May Fisher Guest from Lost in Translation Mon said, "Why Angelman? Why?" <laughs> so Joe at Lonely Distance says, "Togemon's teeth, though." Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that meant like what that means because it's not like complaining about the absence of his Togemon X's teeth. Yeah, I think it's talking about his actual teeth. Fine, whatever. <laughs> you can uh, I thought, I thought someone understood me. I thought someone I understood me. Understood Once they me. listen to this, I'll understand you. Yeah. Cece Takato said, PlayStation 1 CGI. I thought Yawning says, well, they tried, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Matt Kahn, who is uh, CEO of Midboss and GamerX and all other stuff, said, more Vmon okay. I, I guess it would have been okay if Vmon was more. Was Vmon there? Yeah, where He's was Vmon? Magnemon. There, uh, there was no Vmon. Oh. I, don't, I don't know if that right. counts. But maybe, counts. maybe the movie would have been okay if there was Vmon at all. What about X Vmon X? That's what it needed. <laughs> it's true, oh. it's true. Oh. <laughs> That's a very, that's a very, uh, middle school screen name right there. <laughs> oh, it doesn't exist. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, how does this, how? Uh, so at the Sonic Geek says dated CG animation. Homoerotic at the homoerotic said can't even finish. Ooh. Burn. <laughs> At Evermoto says, Daruman is cute. Agree. <laughs> what do you do with Diego's four responses? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we'll read them all. Um, so, uh, Cory de Prime said, cool X designs. And then also said, what's even happening? And then also said, more, <laughs> more, more. And then also said, Lusamon, have mercy. That might not have, <laughs> might not have been the right order, but... <laughs> Ramon slash at Digimon fan for life says, Leoman's death legit? Question <laughs> mark? <laughs> yeah, he'd be always. the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Trent Chestnut at Ertzatz says Digimon kills God. It's Ertzatz. It's German. Pretty Ooh. Sure. <laughs> Ooh, la di da. <laughs> Kai at Kai Otaku Corner says my fave movie. Is that a joke? I really can't tell. <laughs> Is that sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a joke. <sighs> See. I don't know. I've come around to like kind of returning to my like my initial position as when I first watched it, which is like, oh yeah, if you like dig into it a ton, like keep rewatching it, then like it's not so bad. <laughs> so I think it's possible. That's, that's a lot of work to put into a movie. <laughs> oh, totally. But that's what people do, especially when people are younger, right? Like they, you know, like play 200 hours of an RPG that isn't that great. Are you saying I still something? do that now. <laughs> yeah, I've like, I played the 200 hours of Zelda, but that's an amazing <laughs> game, so. I don't know. I, it I think it's in the realm of possibility for someone to think it's a fair movie. That's what yeah. I'm to say. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Uh, Danica at Vex Nexus says, stuff just happens. I think uh, that's, you know, something we should all learn from life. Yeah, life hmm. is just stuff happens. <laughs> um, at Zerudamon says, lots of screaming. Ah! <laughs> Mon is dead. Anyway, the Phantom Geek at Sonic Geek said, Leomon's already dead. It's, yeah, he, he kind of starts off already dying. <laughs> so, like. I guess the Phantom Geek had too. Like oh, was he there Very disparate, yeah. Uh, Carolus slash at Charlie underscore 2814 says, Leomon dies again. He definitely does. He gets. <laughs> Takes like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just gets it right out of the way. I mean, yeah, you are already dead. It's kind of like the opposite of Try. Like Try Chapter Two was like Leo Mon's back. Isn't this great? Isn't this great? Like, and then like at the very last minute, it's like nope, he's dead. This one's like nope, <laughs> dead at the beginning, and then yeah, um, like whoa, Leo Mon. And the final one from Alvaro at Crimson Nine Six Six Zero says, "Why torture yourselves?" <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hope this wasn't torture for listeners. It wasn't torture, it's just... Bad. Why? (laughs) 
now it is time for me to find the sound clip. Now it is time for Terminal Judgment. Anyone have any last thoughts about this movie before we wrap it up? Before we put it in the box and never touch it again? It existed. Um, yeah. I'm sure that in 10 years, I'll be like, hey, remember that X Evolution movie? And I'll watch it again and be like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> because you just forget everything immediately after watching it, even after you've had it explained to you. Um, I feel like, I feel like, the more, like, stepping away from the movie, I feel like it won't actually be, I'll forget how little sense it made, actually. I'll remember the things that made sense, and I'll remember, oh, yeah, there are X-antibodies and, like, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I won't remember how little sense it all made. What things made sense? Uh, no, I feel like, like, with a simplified remembering, <laughs> with a simplified <laughs> recollection of all the components, oh. it will. And I, I think generally things made sense, aside from some huge gaps, after thinking about it a lot. But huge, <laughs> huge gaps being, like, Metal, metal Guruman coming back alive without having lost his ex-antibody. And, yeah. I'm trying to think of any, like, other explicit, just, like, I don't want to call it a plot hole, because it's not like that's a plot hole. It's more just, like, a lie. It's like, <laughs> it's like we told you something, and now here's the opposite of that. <laughs> like, I, I do uh, feel betrayed. <laughs> I think my, my final thought is that I have to go watch Advent Children to get this out of my mind and remember that 2005 was better. Yeah. 2005 was better. <laughs> 1995 was better. Cool. I don't know about that. <laughs> An episode of Beast Wars looks so much better than this did. But so, like, I really think a lot of that boils down to creative direction. That, like, given whatever kind of, like, technology and budget they had, they could make the Royal Knights and the X-Antibody Digimon look cool. And, like, whoever's idea it was to also incorporate all these other Digimon, like, probably should have just steered away from that. And it should have been a thing just focusing on the Digimon that could be rendered well. And then it could have been something that wasn't so awkward. <laughs> that um, wasn't so that. Yeah. I was also thinking, this is an idea, or like I thought I had before that didn't come up, was that like so much focus on War Greymon X and Metal Gurumon X. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's this weird dichotomy in the creativity of Digimon as a franchise that it's always about reinventing itself with the same characters. Like, keep reinventing itself, but also like, here's Agumon as the main Digimon again. Here's War Greymon X in like almost a protagonist role again. Here's an, a completely new thing that is not Digimon. On, oh, here, Agumon's back yeah. for an episode. At least like, so, so that we're, and people aren't aware, Atmon recently, um, I guess it would have been a couple weeks ago as of when this is released, but um, in like episode 45 of Atmon had Agumon appear. Um, as like the first For, explicit reference yeah. of Digimon that aren't Atmon, like that are explicitly not Atmon. Um, and yeah, I feel like it actually was like a decent amount of restraint to wait until episode 45 to do that, you know, like, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I, th I don't know. It's just interesting that like Digimon is, I mean, it's because it's always reinventing itself in so many ways that it has to kind of resort to, you know, retaining similar aspects in order to have something to connect to people who are you know, coming from the old version. Man, imagine if Pokemon didn't even have Pikachu anymore. Yeah, it's a marketing thing as well. Yeah. And I guess I was saying like, oh, wouldn't it be so much more interesting this movie like didn't have any uh, like old faces. It was entirely new faces. And I guess Doramon is kind of that. Like this was the big premiere of Doramon, right? From what I remember, he was also like featured in video games and stuff around this time. A lot. He was in the toys, uh, whatever, D, was it D-Cyber? That was the manga, right? It's a manhua, whatever. Yeah, Ashley was in like a Digital World four or something, right? Yeah, mm. like one of the the Digimon the, the cover. Main, event. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the main Digimon in Digimon World four, along with like Agumon, uh, Geomon, and yeah, it's Agumon, Geomon, must be Vmon and XV. Oh yeah, and Vmon. Yeah, it's got to be Vmon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, in conclusion, this movie had interesting concepts and themes, like life finding a way. Although that's kind of just an echo of Jurassic Park, so it's not like it's novel. But um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> um, like the knights dealing with unjust orders, and that also to us having seen that reiterated in every incarnation of the Royal Knights does not feel novel. I mean, we don't have a fantasy draft, so we have no obligation to lock in MVPs. But I'm curious: do do we have any? Ashley definitely has Doramon. Doramon. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know for certain. And there's no Riley for Ash for Andrew to pick. 
Damn it. <laughs> I also just liked War Grave on X, man. Whatever. Yeah. yeah War Grave on X is pretty good. I think I'm, I'm going to pick War Grave on X. I'm going to pick Wizard Mon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pick Om- Omega Mon, I guess. There was a point where Wizard Mon's like staff was shining light, and it was like, oh, they did not render this light source well. Like, it just look, it had like a couple beams of awkward looking things coming out of it. So, my final question to everyone: mm-hmm. Out of all the CGI films you've seen, mm-hmm. we've all seen different films. We all have different impressions of cinema. Of all the CGI films you've seen, was this one? This was one. This yes. This was one. Yeah. <laughs> this was a movie that, that I saw. I'm glad we all agree. <laughs> <laughs> At first I thought, like, it sounded like your audio cut out for a half second. And I was like, did I misinterpret Jeff's question? <laughs> no. Jeff just asked, is this a CGI? <laughs> <laughs> It's time for recommendation articulation. Was that necessary? <laughs> I was just trying to be true, Bimon. It didn't work very well. It did not work at all. Recommendation articulation. <laughs> Wait, I forgot actually. I forgot actually practiced true Bimon voice in silently in the bedroom one day. <laughs> it's, it doesn't work. It's not possible. <laughs> it's time for terminal judgment. I mean, he also, Trubman is very huggy. It, he Tr- is? Trubman would be all about, I mean, like, in, like, the the not evil form, I guess. He has big, looks like he'd be a big, good, good hugger. He has big arms. Would be a good, he would, he would, he would endorse plugging hugs, or hugging plugs, mm, I think. Goodbye. From digits! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you have one minute. Plug something. Uh, so I tried to actually see if I plugged this before, but I haven't. And since it's the only thing I've done recently, I'm going to say Maid Sama because Asher and I are... <laughs> I'm not sure it deserves a plug. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Cruel. <laughs> Uh, someday you'll be able to ha- hear Asher and my s- full thoughts on that, apparently, <laughs> on a podcast, because we podcasted about that yesterday, and I really like Maid Sama, so it deserves right, a plug right. from me. All right, all right, all right. All Misaki right. is my Patronus. <laughs> Asher, you ready? Sure. Um, I will recommend, I don't think I recommended this before, uh, it's a uh, Picross app mm. um picross luna and it's very calming the pictures are nice and cute and it's got this like story mode where you tr- got to try to figure out what happened to the princess and um and the knight and the evil wizard and it's poorly translated so you get lines like i'm going to dunk on the evil wizard that did this to me i'm just like what are you talking about i'm going to dunk so anyway, it's cute, and if you need a way to waste your time, it's great for that. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Andrew. I am going to recommend Kemono Friends because this movie suddenly reminded me of it for some godforsaken reason. It's because they both are animated really well, right? Actually, partly, and then suddenly the anti- the ex-antibody nonsense reminded me of the i think it's stardust or something that turns regular animals into the the friends hmm. but it's fun edu- somewhat educational about <laughs> animals it's got good morals and stuff and good it's morals. now a no it does i've heard good things about it yeah it's good it's become like one of the most popular things in japan right now it's fun but sure the animation is not the best thing in the world but it's still fun i am going to recommend and i can't remember if andrew's recommended this before i don't think he has but we've mentioned it in passing before an anime called recreators it's currently airing yes. now i think by the time this comes out it'll also st- hopefully still be airing hopefully this won't come out super late um but uh yeah it's on it's hard to watch because it's on anime strike in the u.s and uh amazon in other territories and probably fewer territories in every other country world but anyway if you can get it it is good it is um about basically anime and things related to anime like manga video games etc characters coming to life and duking it out battling in the real world um 
and for reasons it is uh kind of like the intersection of several different genres plus dealing with ideas about like what entertainment is for what why people create things where does creative fulfillment come from what is media for it, it deals, deals with interesting concepts is animated super well has like hiroyuki sawano soundtrack the what has he done most like attack on titan probably most well known kill a kill kill a kill yeah um yeah it's it's really well really high production value just really books. philosophical yeah but it hasn't finished yet so i don't know if it I'm hesitant about recommending things I haven't finished yet. Also, it has the best recap episode of all time. Oh, it's, it's true. There's a recap episode which you might be tempted to skip, but it actually is not just reused clips. It like I saw an interview recently. They planned it from the very beginning, so it's not like it actually like has its own storyboard and everything. It's good. You watch it. You can find the full show notes and comment thread for this episode at pottages.com slash 021. Jump in the comments to let us know what you thought about this episode, like how much you love this movie and how it's your favorite movie ever and how there are no faults with it and it makes perfect sense and <laughs> it's the best thing ever written. But you can also go to the episode page to rate the movie, star rating, and you can let us know your thoughts via social media, email, or with the Will thread or the Digimon subreddit thread for this episode. Or by making your own CGI animation with <laughs> such low production values that it just screams into the ether, you know, just like a whole blocks smashing each other. And then it'll be such an atrocity what? that we hear it. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> okay, Jeff, I'll do that. Our Agunimon artwork while we've been covering Frontier is by Jubia Majo on DeviantArt. And we'll have links in our show notes to check out the rest of their artwork. Prodigies is made possible with your support on Patreon, including support from our champion Patreon, Diab Joman, the infamous Tokujo on Twitter, uh, new champion Patreon, Dizzy Dizumi, we'll maybe work on that, they're at Dizzy and Lost on Twitter, <laughs> Joe Kito, Kai Lunamon, Michael Penne, and Sam Kuagamon, who's also on the Moncast. Our ultimate Patreon, David Grauman, and our mega Patreon, Marcus, who seriously, we're so close, and yet it always seems so far, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> we, can almost feel, we can almost feel the punch hitting our face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want to be cool like them, then you can become a Patreon too. For $1 a month, you can join our private group chat on Slack, where we talk about things like TV, anime, and games. You can also get cool stuff like commentary tracks and behind-the-scene notes for $3 a month a new sticker and button every month for $10, and ability to choose episode topics for $15 a month. You can find Podigis on Twitter, Tumblr, or Facebook to keep up the Digimons, hear about upcoming episodes and recordings, and get funny Digimon images and GIFs. I'm Drew Softman on Twitter. I'm Asher Dashery on Tumblr. I'm Jeff Lee Jeff on Twitter. And I'm AsherD00 on Twitter. Share the podcast with your friends who have developed an ex-antibody because they have the will to live. And don't share the podcast with your friends who discriminate against those with the X antibody. Bye. 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 And remember, never stop your mind. It's translated one of the voices as Roto Light Nightmon, but I don't yeah, remember seeing. Right. I saw that too, and I was like, "Wait, what? The, this the character not in this movie? What?" <laughs> So maybe they were cut out. What? But I mean, that that's in, it's not like the part of this fan subbing or whatever. That's in the original cast list thing in Japanese too and everything. Oh. Yeah, Crusader Mon's supposedly in this movie, but I don't remember ever seeing well, them. Crusader Mon's, like, a voice actor is credited with that role. So even more so than just like in the background, like they had a voice and they're credited. Hmm. Hmm. Crusader Mon? This, this movie is weird. And apparently it's the same, the same voice actor as, um... As in Frontier. They're all the same voice actors. Well, yeah. But I mean, uh, Lord Nightmare, I assume, is in Sabres too, right? And it's not listed here. It's the same. Are they in Sabres? Whatever. We'll find out eventually. <laughs> Oof. It's fitting, though, that even the credits couldn't be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what intro music am I going to use? Was there music in this movie? There was a soundtrack? <laughs> there yes. was a soundtrack. It's on It's on Amazon Japan. I found it. But like... Really? Was okay. there music? <laughs> There wasn't, um, like, vocal music? Is that what there you're was, asking? The soundtrack is literally the most forgettable thing ever in Digimon. Let's, um... Here, here's the intro music I'll use. It's just so... 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 Welcome to Potagis, episode 021, Pixar's Finding Doraemon. I, I was gonna say it's there. It's... It is animated. 
it's bad, but it's not Food Fight bad. This Food Fight is the recent thing, right? Yeah. Well, it had production issues that because they kind of lost the movie at one point and had I to redo everything just... from scratch. Oh, okay. I'm getting confused with the one that was like more recent. That was like, uh, like super gritty. Like cartoons don't have to be for kids. Do you know what I'm talking about? That had was about food, and it was like Sausage the food party? had sex. What? Sausage no, that's party. Sausage Party. Sausage. Okay. Clearly, Sausage Party and Food Fight are totally different. Why would you ever get them confused? This was a Digimon film written by one of the best screenwriters in anime. <laughs> Great, it really lived up to that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's how we should market this episode. A Pottage episode reviewing one of an <laughs> yeah. movie written by... Actually, also technically the, the, the title of the movie is not Digimon X Evolution, which is what I kept thinking it was. It's Digital Monster X Evolution. Yeah. Is there a subtitle? I don't think so. Um, it's not even Digital Monsters. It's Digital... Mo- like, like, what is it even referred to as Digital Monster Singular? <laughs> the Rumon. <laughs> I just don't think it's ever used elsewhere in the franchise. So, uh, anyway, let's go on to Digifeud. Who's doing it this time? Digifeud. Oh, I assumed it was Ashley. Or... Asher and Ashley. Ash- I just mix- I just said Asher and Ashley together, like Ashley. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Ashley. Durban. <laughs> oh, hold on. I don't know this time, already. Um... Sorry, 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 sorry. It's sort of unfair. We have to mimic a buzzer while Jeff has the soundboard. Like, Jeff should also have to mimic a buzzer. <laughs> oh, you want me to do that? No. Because I could do it. I don't actually want you to do that. Is the room on right or not? <laughs> Kisho Ten Ketsu, which is four. And that's like... No, I mean four. No, that's three. I, I thought it was four as well. No, four... No, for uh, I mean for uh, Western movies, isn't it's three. it four X? It's three. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, yes. It's three. Andrew. I thought I thought it was four, and I looked. It Listen, up and... it's three. This is why all the Hunger Games books are broken into three parts because and this Suzanne is why the movie Collins was, was like, into, this is how. This is why the movie was. There were four movies. No, Suzanne <laughs> Collins had, did nothing wrong. <laughs> they had four she, movies. She's all like, more money. yes. Normally, there are three arcs of things, so she always writes everything in right. three arcs. So, so the, the general three act structure in that also to us having seen that reiterate in every incarnation of the Royal Knights does not feel novel. Wait, why do you keep up bringing Jurassic Park? Because that's like an explicit line in Jurassic Park. I haven't actually seen Jurassic it, Park. What? <laughs> um, that like the whole point is that like isn't it like they're going to wipe out the dinosaurs and they're like, oh no, life finds a way, and that's why they attack and stuff. No. I mean, it's definitely a quote from the movie. Jeff Goldblum says it. Says it. Yeah, I can't even say says. Jeff Goldblum says it. Jeff, go watch or at least read Jurassic Park because that's not what it's about. What is it actually about? It's a guy who makes a dinosaur theme park using real <laughs> dinosaurs, and then the power goes I, out. I know the concept of dinosaur. I know the concept of dinosaurs. I was gonna say I know the concept <laughs> of Jurassic Park. Um, okay, yeah, this is this is kind of what I expected. That. It's about whether the dinosaurs would breed in the wild, and they're like, no, that wouldn't happen, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's about, you're implying the that power. a group composed entirely of female animals will breed. Wait, it's about, like, girls getting it on with each other? No, it's because they have frog DNA. Anyway, I think it still fits here. I, I, I'm all about my uh, not culturally appropriating things. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. Wait, was that was that an impromptu woo woo that wasn't referencing DuckTales? Yes. Oh, damn, I should have said DuckTales. <laughs> it's okay. But, Everybody but already did that DuckTales. last week. Exactly. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Well, that, that episode, oh, yeah, that one will come up before this one. Yeah. I second Andrew's recommendation of DuckTales <laughs> as well. <laughs> and join us next week as we start Data Squad. That's going to sound so awkward if I actually used it. Data Squad. <laughs> Data Squad. <laughs> Join us next time as we cover Data Squad. As we punch <laughs> in our time co- card for mm. Data Squad. <laughs> and get your fists ready, because next time we're going to Data Squad Town. Because next time we're fisting? Are you trying to make a no, sexy joke? Actually, no, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> All right. XXX antibodies, you guys!